Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. This one went really fast. Been very busy this week. Uh, had to go upstate again, you know, as you know, the maintenance upstate, the grass. And I, I'm cutting the lawn once a week now down here. It's it's growing like crazy, you know, with all that rain we have. Rainwater seems to do much better than if you were to spray it with a hose or something. It really makes a, the, the grass and everything green pop. Um... Funny thing, when I was upset, a couple people said, what does it look like before you go up? I mean, how much does it grow? So I shot a little video. This is what it looks like when I go up there. This is how the grass looks when I get there. It don't look too bad from far away, but I guess it's about five, six inches long. And uh, obviously, you know, after I finish cutting it, this is what it looked like. And it was just such a beautiful day up there with the, the clouds and the just, I always try and go up on a nice day and it's just it's so pleasurable up there so many things to see so so the air is so fresh and clean no traffic absolutely look this is the road that i uh that my property's on look at that road i mean it's the, you could count the number of cars on that road on you know two hands on one day you know whereas in in 5 minutes i can't count the number of cars that pass my house here in queens um one thing is, I want to tell you, sir, when I was mowing the lawn, I was mowing the lawn and, and uh, I saw this big shadow pass over me. You would think it was a plane. It was so big. It was like, you know, on the ground, it was like 15 feet. And I, you know, I, I jumped. I was, I almost jumped off the tractor because, and now I know what a, probably a chipmunk or a groundhog feels with the hawks coming. You know, they see that shadow. It's the shadow of death. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I looked up and it was uh, an eagle and uh, eagles have, you know, like six foot wingspans, they're big, big birds. But because it was up high, the sun made the shadow look so big. I, you know what I thought it was? <laughs> I thought it was uh, maybe a pterodactyl, you know, or a P pterodactyl, as it's pronounced here in the States, P pterodactyl. Most people don't know that. Um, or, uh, one of these birds that you ever see in the civil war back in the 19th century was a couple of these photographs floating around the web of, of these civil war soldiers with, uh, you know, <laughs> with a downed prehistoric bird. It's just amazing. You know, I always found that amazing when I see that. Look, I know a lot of those photos have been disproven. Some, not so much, but look, who cares? It's a cool photo. You got to love it. Here's another, look at this cool photo. This isn't doctored up. This was a... These Civil War guys with, look at them elephants behind. I mean, what's that all about? Were they trying to get them ready for war? I don't know what's going on. Okay, actually, I'm very glad that uh, you wanted to see the handle put on this uh, hammer. First of all, I went into my stash. I have uh, quite a stash of hammer handles because I have so many projects waiting to be done. I bought a, I must have bought about uh, 40 of them at one time. I got a really good deal on them. So all different styles and shapes. So here's a nice this would be to make this into like a drilling hammer, which would be a short kind of sledgehammer. Nice, beautiful handle, right? And uh, then look at this. Remember, do you ever see these type of wedges, these steel wedges compared? I don't know if I'll be able to use it if it's going to be, I have enough uh, area up there. But I always want to try these out, put it in with the dake. But have a nice handle here. We have our beautiful sledgehammer that we finished. And uh, one thing I'd like to do is I was thinking of putting vacuum cup holes in here like we did a couple videos ago or a couple years ago now. So let's do that because it, it really make it pop. That's what we want to do. We want to take this to the next level. Okay, first off, we're going to put a handle on that beautiful sledgehammer that John Sochran sent over last week. And uh, the first thing we're going to do, this is a drawing of the uh, actual... Uh, side view of the hammer you know they have the hole that goes through it's not a hole some people think it's a straight hole that goes through it's not it's actually tapered now uh, sledgehammers drilling hammers any heavy duty hammer has a more tapered hole in here like an hourglass design than your typical uh, hammer that you would use as a carpenter or at the lighter the duty the uh, the straighter this uh, hole will be but uh, for heavy duty you need a handle that will not come off now here is a ball peen and that's a medium duty hammer but you could still see the taper in here if you look closely uh you could see that ring in the middle there and that's where they punch it down this way and they it's called swaging they swage it this way and they swage it that way 
and you can see it's uh, tapered on both ends. And the reason they do that is because when you seat this hammer head onto the handle, and this is what your typical handle looks like, the bottom of the hammer will seat against the swell in the handle. And then all you have to do is wedge the top open to seal it on. And that's all there is to it. Now, this is your typical uh, hammer handle that when you get it. Now, the important thing is you're going to have to sand this or use a drawer knife or even a pocket knife, anything. You're going to have to get this down so that this, this uh, dimension here, the thinnest part of that hourglass will have to be the middle of this handle, okay? You cannot have a wider top like an hourglass because it'll never fit in. So it has to be, it's going to look like this. It's going to look almost tapered. From the side, it'll look like this. They usually cut a slot in for your wedge, and I like to drill a hole here so that when you wedge it in, it will not, the split will not continue down the handle. So what you have when you, because of this excessive hourglass design in the sledge, what you're going to wind up with is a, uh, a profile. And this is a top view. It's going to look like this when you put your handle in. There's going to be a large gap around here because you had to fit this through that small, that small area in the middle. Now, uh, what you have to do is you have to use the appropriate wedge. Now, you'll double this area here, whatever this dimension is between the handle and the side. You're going to have to double that for your wedge. Now, with ball peen hammers, because they're not so excessive the hourglass that you could get away with a thinner wedge but with a sledgehammer you might have to use a slightly thicker wedge and that's why wedges come in different sizes now what happens is when we press that or bang that wedge in it's going to force the split apart and it's going to wedge the two sides of the hammer handle against the side of the head and this is what it's going to look like but you're still going to have minor gaps on each side because the wedge only moves the wood one way one it's going to be uh, apart that way it doesn't move it this way so that's why we put in a steel wedge the reason they're usually steel wedge is because when you use when you hammer a proper size wedge into that wood it's so hard and compressed now you would never be able to put another wood wedge in it would just split so that's why usually the secondary wedge is a metal wedge put in this way and it separates it. You can put it in an angle, you can put it, but it will separate it and fill in those gaps. And that's how you properly handle a hammer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out three lines that run parallel to the, the sides here. And we're going to use a divider. You can see here we use a divider. We mark off here each one of these just to give you an approximate all the way up. Make a little marks and then we're going to center punch these and countersink them. So you see that we do on both sides. Now, once you use your hand punch and, and place the holes where you want them, take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, or you can use acetone. But uh, you see what you do is you wipe off the lines now. Okay, you wipe off the lines, and uh, and then this way you could you got the holes. Are very proud, and now we're going to countersink them. Okay, now is the time that you made all your marks. Now you use a straight razor blade and you scrape off you see here you're just going to scrape off this finish that's on here there's probably like a polyurethane or some inexpensive finish that's on here you can see it pooling on the bottom here we're going to scrape all that off because we want to stain this and uh, when you stain it you want the stain to uh to absorb into the wood not lay on top of this uh polyurethane so scrape that down to bare wood And you know my favorite part. Remember what this sledgehammer looked like before we started. We're calling this project done. Uh, this came out just the way we were hoping to. Now, you can see here what we did. We put these little, they call them vacuum cups in here. There was a company years ago. I did a video. A company used to make these handles, but it's, it's to give you added grip. And especially for a hammer like this, what's called a drilling hammer or something where, you know, you don't want to slip out of your hand. You can see I did it in... Um, 
First, I stained it because this wood's so hard, it wouldn't really accept the dark stain. So afterwards, I put a coat of uh, amber shellac and then followed by regular shellac. And then I still will wait a while and then I'll, I'll wax it later on. But I'll just give it some time to dry. But you can see what we have here. Uh, we also filled in those letters, which everybody wanted to see filled in with red. And we did that, the US, the 14, and on the bottom, the number three, you could see here. Uh, now the, this is the beautiful part here. And when this is nice and tight, you could see here, it's just a beautiful sight to see. And it's perfectly level. When you run your finger across the top here, you cannot feel any whatsoever anymore. And that's because what you do is you cut it flush and then I sand it and then you're going to have to uh, re-sand the metal again. But that's perfectly flush. Now there is two coats of linseed oil on there. And I will continue putting linseed oil on there until it stops absorbing it. That's the only thing that's on the top linseed oil. The rest of it is, and the only reason I do it with shellac is because it's very durable and it's going to be, you know, I won't be using this too much because I got a bunch of these, but isn't that a nice hammer? Really nice. John, thank you so much. This came out just the way I was hoping it would. Next up, my buddy Chris Logan from Toronto, Canada, uh, won an online estate auction, and he got a couple of these locks, and he sent them over. He said, I thought you would enjoy them. Check out these. I love any kind of lock that's uh, in the box and whatever. Let me show you what's so interesting about these three locks. Now, here are the locks removed from the boxes. You can see the middle lock here, that master, what's supposed to be a 44, is actually a different lock but what's interesting about these three locks did you figure it out yet is the size look at them look at how small these locks are they're as big as your finger absolutely beautiful and you know uh, a lot of manufacturers made these very small locks and they put a lot of time into making them look at them and uh, they were more than just decorative because they would secure luggage things like that but Look at this one here, especially this bell lock, right? This bell lock is very similar to its full-size brother. You see that there? But, uh, and it's even got, look at the key it has. It even has a, uh, you know, a realistic, you know, more or less where some of the other keys were a little more uh, small scale. This one here looks just like a, but look how small it is. It's tiny. It's tiny. It's as, you know, look at that. I can't tell you how small these are. So I always found these interesting that manufacturers would go out of their way to make these small padlocks. And, uh, you know, if you with a uh, really how hard would it get to be get through these locks? But apparently they they uh, did the job and you could see the nice boxes they made for these locks. You know, every one of these boxes that they used to make uh, when things used to come in boxes instead of uh, clamshell packaging and things like that. I always get a kick out of that. Um, and really nice locks you could see here. Uh, the make, the manufacturer. Bell is something you don't usually see too often. But this was a Hong Kong manufacturer. So they were just getting in trying to break in. But I always liked. Chris, thank you so much. These are beautiful. And uh, how small and petite they are, aren't they? Okay, so in closing, special thanks to John for the sledge and Chris for the locks for today's projects. Uh, appreciate you all tuning in. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take advantage of it. It's going to be beautiful weather here on the East Coast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.